people's local language. That would be interesting. Yeah. Um, I always thought they were just in English, always. Okay, well, welcome to Chaos Community Meeting. Back, We're back, it's January 2023. Hooray! Really good to see everyone here. We have some new faces also. So um, we have a light agenda, which I will link here in the chat. Um, let me share my screen. And if we have time, I would really like to um, take like five minutes, 10 minutes and just go around and have everybody introduce themselves since we do have some new folks. Um, that would be, I think, helpful for them and also for us to get used to um, seeing them and getting, getting to know people. So um, we usually when we do these kinds of things, we do um, I don't know if you want to call it a hot potato. I don't know, but you do like a handoff. So you like when it's your turn, you then pick the next person. So that's how that goes. So I'll kick it off and I will say my name is Elizabeth. I am the chaos community manager and I've been here at chaos since June of 2020 and I live in Cincinnati, Ohio. And yes, I did just get two new guinea pigs that are amazing and wonderful little guys. So they're little brothers. I only wanted to get one, but I ended up getting two because they were together and you can't separate them. So yeah, now I have two. Anyway, I will pick the next person and that is Nicole. If she's around, if she's not, we can pick someone else. Okay, we'll come back to you, Nicole. Um, how about Dawn, you're next on my list underneath. Yes, I'm Don Foster. I work at VMware in our open source uh, program office. I'm on the governing board of chaos, amongst other things. And I live just outside of London. Oh, and uh, Georg, you're up. Awesome. Hey, everyone. I'm Georg Blink. Good to be back. Happy New Year. I'm uh, also founding member, governing board member, I helped with the podcast and I live in Omaha, Nebraska. And yeah, I pass it on to um, Daniel or Daniel. Hello. Hi. Yeah, I'm Daniel. I'm from Nigeria. I'm a I'm actually a newbie here. This is my first meeting here. Um I'm a Python developer with experience in Django and Flask. So I hope to learn a lot from this community. Thanks for being here, Daniel. Um, Victoria, do you want to go? Hello, my name is Victoria. Um, I'm from Nigeria, and this is my second time here. This is the second meeting. The first meeting was when um, we had um, we're being introduced to Og Olga. Sorry if I'm not getting the. I'm not. I didn't pronounce it well. Sorry. So this is my second Sounded meeting, right. and um, I'm really excited today for today's meeting because yesterday I had the opportunity to um, work on a task, and that was my first open source contribution, and I was really excited about it. <laughs> uh, I the task was to replace the link of the old um, handbook, the chaos handbook, the old link. So I replaced it with the new link, and I'm really, really excited about it. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks. Thanks, Victoria. And yeah, that would be all. Sorry, that's all. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> um, maybe Armstrong, do you want to go? Sure. 
So happy new year to everyone, especially to the new folks and to all those who have been here for ages like Georg, Math and Sean, Elizabeth, Don. So this year we're starting with a, a lot of positive energy and a lot of uh, work also on the table. So uh, I'm working right now with uh, Zill. It's a project that uh, deals with explainable, interpretable and certifiability in machine learning models, especially deep learning models. So we are building <coughs> some uh, AI stuff with Airbus, Boeing, and this uh, Bombardier is mo mostly focused with these uh, safety critical systems. And alongside, uh, as a research uh, fellow at Ecole Polytechnic, we are also uh, mentoring uh, some PhD students and masters on that particular topic. So my plate is really full, but nevertheless, my love for open source is so great that I cannot survive without chaos and uh, the open infra kind of community. So that said, this uh, today is the deadline also for those who were about to apply to submit their talks also for the open infra. I mean, open source is great and chaos is really the heartbeat of so many things open. So thank you very much and uh, happy new year. So I'm, uh, I think I will pass it on to Nicole. Hi, Armstrong, and, and hello, everyone, um, and Happy New Year. It is so fantastic to uh, to see so many folks from all over the world, so this is super cool, and I have the same passion that um, Armstrong has, and in fact, we met back in the OpenStack or Open Infra uh, community, gosh, years ago now, um, uh, so let's see, um, I started uh, I think my open source experience started in the Yocto project. Um, and, uh, and I worked in many different um, communities, OpenStack, Linux, um, on when I was at Intel. And I'm now at the Linux Foundation and uh, getting my feet wet um, uh, in things like uh, 3D uh, technologies, um, Oh gosh, the overhyped buzzword of metaverse, um, and so uh, that uh, that's kind of uh, put me under underwater a, a bit in this last year. Um, but it is uh, so great again to see everybody on this call. Uh, and with that, uh, Sean, I'm not sure that you've you've introduced yourself yet. I have not introduced myself yet. Hi, this is Sean Goggins. I'm one of the co-chairs with Nicole of Chaos Project currently. And I am uh, also one of the maintainers for the Augur software project within Chaos. Uh, Happy New Year, everybody. I am actually right now at the Hilton Head Airport, returning from my first academic conference since January, 2020. So um, it's very exciting to have the rest of my world beginning to meet face-to-face. -face. And nice to see you all. And I'll pass it to Sophia. I don't think Sophia's gone yet, has she? I have not. Thank you, Sean. Hi, hi everyone. Sophia Vargas. I work at Google in the Open Source Programs Office and have been working with Chaos since 2020. Um, and just happy to be here. This was my first project also in open source to work on. So it's been fun to hear others that have similar experiences. And it's nice to be here. And I guess the fun fact is because I'm at work and you're at my desk, I will show you that I have this awkward bobblehead that just sits here and looks at me. Uh, <laughs> so I don't, my boss gave it to me about six years ago and he's no longer my boss, but I still have this bobblehead. So here we are. Uh, I'll pass it on to Venia. Venia, Venia, please. I always get it wrong. Please correct me. No worries. Uh, is this just the beginning of your introduction? Okay, cool. Um, so my name is Samantha Venia Logan. I do go by Venia and I run a organization called sociallyconstructed.online, which is about uh, helping people build online communities and then using those online communities as case studies uh, to teach the social science of online community. Um, so that's what I do. And I'm kind of a vendor individual. I'm involved in the communications working group. Um, yeah, I'm a bit of an odd duck, but I enjoy my time at Chaos a lot.
I want to pass it on, Vinya. Or... Oh, that's a thing. Um, yeah. Sorry, I got here late. Um, who hasn't gone yet? Uh, Vinod? Yes, I guess I'm the last one. Uh, is everyone done? So maybe. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Vinod Ahuja. I'm a PhD student at University of Nebraska, Omaha, and I do my research in open source software, especially on the corporate side, uh, looking at the corporate engagement in open source. And I've been with Kios since 2017. Uh, regularly attending different working group meetings. So yes, and I just came back yesterday from CES 2023 from Las Vegas. And the interesting thing that I found over there is now every product has a uh, buzzword AI, AI earbuds, AI cycles, AI everything. So you name the product, you will find an AI buzzword in front of it. That's my takeaway from that conference is. And happy new year to everyone. So I guess everyone is done. So I don't there think are I two need people to pause. that haven't gone. I haven't gone and Nemya hasn't gone. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so I'll pick Matt to you. <laughs> okay, that's good. Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome back. It's good to see everybody. Uh, Sophia, if you have a bobblehead, I have a, a screaming goat that kind of stares at me on all of my calls as well and occasionally I'm playing with it and I accidentally push it and it screams <laughs> and I have to explain to everybody on the call that it was the <laughs> the goat <laughs> please, please make it scream right now Matt we would love to hear that <laughs> you must make it a requirement now that every time the goat screams on a camera you have to follow up in your response at least one goat pun <laughs> there's no just job ram it in there <laughs> So I'm also one of the co-founders of the Chaos Project. I've been here for a long time. Um, I will say I'm really excited for for 2023. I think there's a lot of really great things uh, that are gonna that are gonna happen this year. So it's great to be here. Um, so uh, Namya, do you wanna do you wanna introduce yourself? Yep. Uh, so hi, I'm Namya. I'm from Bangalore, India. So. I was just exploring uh, the world of open source and I happened to come across the Chaos Project. So I want to make some meaningful contributions and learn more about the project and community. Awesome. It's good to see you again, Namya. <laughs> Who was at the open office hours. Um, it has already been making meaningful contributions to chaos as well, so thank you and thank you to all our newcomers for showing up and hanging out with us and getting to know chaos a little bit better we're so happy that you're here. Um, we're going to go ahead and move forward, so um, we do have for those who aren't familiar, we do have a chaos con coming up on February 3rd, which is in um, conjunction with FOSTEM. So while we're trying to plan that um, one day event, we'll take this meeting right here and kind of chop it in half. So the first part of the meeting will be, is what we're doing right now is just our general meeting for about 30 minutes or so. And then we'll save the end of this meeting for the Chaos Con committee planning um, part. So um, we'll kind of let everybody else go. And those who are involved in pl planning Chaos Con can stick around for the last 20 or so minutes. Um, just to kind of discuss some things. So um, after Chaos Con, we'll go back to the format of just one general meeting for the whole 50 minutes. So that's a little bit of context about why our agenda looks like this today. Um, so we did the welcome back and happy new years to everyone. Um, again, really happy that you're here. Um, the next item on here is that our Chaos Community Handbook is now live on the website. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Huge shout out to Ruth and Shoya, who were, were working as part of the Google Season of Docs project um, to get that to happen. So um, the community handbook is now all in our um, knowledge base where you can see different topic areas, you can search, you can find what you need, hopefully in a, a little bit easier to, um, to find format. Um, we will say that if you if you do find anything that's broken or a link that doesn't work or something that's confusing or whatever, do not hesitate in the least to open an issue in the community repo in um, GitHub. And we can put a link in there in the minutes for that as well, just to let us know. 
Um, and if you see anything in that repo that says good first issue or help wanted, that's a, something that needs to be fixed. So feel free to jump in and, and do that if you'd like. Um, there is a recommendation um, to update the handbook because um, that's kind of a, a, a broken piece of our workflow <laughs> is that there isn't really a good loop back around. So Shoya and Ruth came up with this idea of having um, a bot that helps um, helps us facilitate and manage that process of keeping that updated, keeping the handbook updated. Um, it looks like, you know, Namya has already been working on this <laughs> as well. So um, thank you so much. And we had a great conversation about that in the open office hours that were this morning. Um, there is this doc here um, that we can continue this conversation in. If this is something that you're interested in, or have comments on or want to discuss, we can certainly open the floor here. Um, but essentially, it would be a bot that helps us um, by opening tickets occasionally in working groups. Um, just as a reminder of like, if there's anything that's been changing in your group that needs to be reflected in the handbook. For instance, um, here's a perfect example of this, the Asia uh, Pacific community is changing their time, which is the next item on our agenda. Um, but there, this um, information is in a few places in the handbook, not just the calendar. So I changed the calendar, but as we were looking through the handbook in the open office hours, we found it in a, a couple of different places. So those are the kind of things that like would just be great to either, you know, maybe automate a little more or have some kind of prompt that says, hey, can somebody just go check this and make sure that it's fixed everywhere that needs to be fixed. Um, so yeah, and Shri's going to look at that for us. So the bot is intended to like, you had mentioned that example of opening issues, like for folks or for working groups, um, just to ask the working groups, hey, do you have any updates that you think have shown up in the last two weeks or last month or whatever that need to be updated in the handbook? Is that yes. right? Okay. Yeah. Another another example of that is the change from OSPO, from value to OSPO. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're kind of seeing little pieces where we're still referring to it as the value working group, for instance, okay. in the handbook. So it's just kind of like giving the working groups a prompt to help us okay. keep that community handbook as updated as possible. So would the would the hope of the working groups then be to fix it themselves, or would it be to post an issue in the handbook? I, I would say whatever, you know, okay. if somebody in that working group wants to take that on and it's okay. something that can be done, you know, not maybe having to go deep, deep into WordPress to gotcha. do. Okay. Um, and just for those who don't know, like half of the website is in WordPress. Well, the whole website's in WordPress, but half of the information is in WordPress pages. The other parts of the word of the website are in GitHub. And we have a special plugin that we got from the Linux Foundation that keeps that updated, that will pull that information from GitHub, but not the whole site does that. So it's a little bit confusing, but um, yeah. So if it is something that can be updated in GitHub and the working group wants to do that themselves, totally fine. If not, opening an issue in the community or the website repos, I think is fine. Okay. Like we'll, we'll get it sorted. And then the second one, the sync the content from GitHub, to your point, is that something that is usually manually done? No, no, this was um, something that does it actually works automatically, so okay. this part would not be needed. Okay. And I think we had we had a little bit of a conversation about that earlier in the office hours, I think we have it listed in here okay. um, as maybe not something that we actually need. I gotcha. Um, so those, but those the other, points yeah. were just kind of ideas. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, the other conversation we had, which was kind of interesting, I thought was um, taking uh our meeting minutes and like having some kind of bridge that would like we could put something in the minutes that would indicate that an issue needs to be open for either the handbook updates or like an action item or something that would automatically open that issue so that was just an idea we were throwing around in the office hours and i think nami is gonna maybe think up think on that for a little bit ruminate and see if there's like a plugin maybe we can use slack as the bridge like i don't know what that would look like but that would be really awesome because i if think there's the right times thing. when we have if action have right items thing. that kind of just float around because we don't really have a way to get, really track those so that'd be kind of if, cool. if you have the right uh, permissions on a github token you can do that through the github api automatically so it would be writing a pretty simple 
spot ish thing to open an issue. Would it would it like scan the Google Doc or like how would it? No, get... we'd have to. Somebody would have to create some kind of funky Google Docy thing that called the API. That that part, I. It's technology. It can be done. I just can't think of specifically how I would do it right now. Yeah. Um, so I've never done anything with GitHub. I haven't used GitHub's API specifically, but I know that that would be relatively easy for you to do with Zapier, uh, where it literally just says whenever. So the trigger would be when Google Drive has a comment added and that comment includes label issue tracker, then create a GitHub issue in this uh, spot. Shouldn't be hard. Yeah, I've had I've had students use that here now that you mention it. And at our volume, which I'd expect to be pretty low, I don't think it would cost much of much if it would cost anything at all. Yeah, so that's really that's great. Thank you, Venya. That's awesome. Um, and else Namia, you'd be you... able to do that with a webhook, wouldn't you? Or not? Uh you can probably yeah, do it with a webhook. I, that's how you would do it in I would think most so likely. Too. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right, Don. That might be a there might be fewer moving parts in that approach. Yeah, I don't know. I've never used Zapier, so I, I can't really compare them. And I haven't done a webhook on my own, so I don't I don't know how much effort that is either. So I think Namia is the one kind of working on this. Um so yeah, if anybody does have any other comments or anything. Oh, my doorbell's ringing. Come in. No, don't come in because I'm kind of in the middle of something. Anyway, um, yeah, um, you can drop them here in this issue or reach out to Namia on Slack. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you all. This for is your... great. Any way to kind of keep that handbook updated would be yeah. really great. Yeah, 100% agree. Um, okay, the next one is going back to that issue um, Asia Pacific meeting is changing, um, there will now be a monthly meeting and it will happen on the second Monday of the month at 3pm UTC plus eight so guessing none of uh, the central a big change yeah that's a big change. <laughs> <right? Yeah. laughs> and I, I would also say I'm, I'm guessing I don't have final confirmation from Shoya, but if I had to guess this time uh, uh, would go with China standard time. So any kind of daylight savings things, I think is gonna, like on the calendar, I tagged it with that time zone. So I think it will stay with that time zone as opposed to the rest of the working group meetings that kind of stick with the US central Chicago time and follow the daylight savings of that time zone. So that's another um, kind of change there. If you're if you're attending those meetings, just be aware of that. And you can also pop in, there's a, the Asia Pacific, um, channel chat channel um, that you can join as well to kind of um, keep track of that as well. Anybody I have think, questions? So yeah, I think a lot of this too is um, uh, Shoya is trying to coordinate with Anna in the to do group with the to do group Asia Pacific efforts as well. So trying to to sync those up. So I think that was a big reason for the move. Will those meetings still be in Chinese or are they going to be in English now? My guess is they'll be in English. Just based okay. on the syncing with the to do group. But I don't know. Um, we can ask Shoya. Um, cause I think that would be a pertinent information to have listed somewhere. Like if it is in Chinese, just so people know, um, maybe I'll just reach out to Shoya and verify that. Yeah. And if it, either way, I think, um, like as long as they're, the working group is taking minutes that we can take a look at just to kind of keep updated as to what the action items are like kind of like what the efforts are that'd be cool because i will never be able to make that meeting yeah <laughs> no nor will i <laughs> um 
that's a good uh, question though, Matt. Um, are the minutes changing location? Because I think they're using your SharePoint for those minutes, right, Matt? Yeah, they have been for a long time. So we'll see what, maybe they have them listed somewhere else. And actually it probably would be good, particularly if I'm not on that meeting to move them to a new doc anyway. Yeah, because sometimes people can't get in for whatever reason. And exactly. There. Yeah, yeah, but they're kind of it's kind of funny sometimes. And maybe that we could just build one in the chaos Google Drive. Yeah, yeah. If do you think they'll be able to access though? Because that was it, like the original problem, right? It was the original problem. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. Okay, we'll figure it out. I'll I'll talk to Shoy about that. Thank you. Um, and then the last I sorry any other questions or comments about that meeting. Yuki uh, the last item is that just to give everyone a heads up, we are launching discourse pretty soon we're in the final like it's all set up we're in the final kind of tweaks of things. Um, for instance, like the badges i'm not really sure how that works on discourse and. There's a lot of badges that don't really seem chaosy, if that makes sense. So we might want to think about what badges we would want to offer, if any, um, for participating in the discourse forum. There's an issue somewhere, maybe here. Uh, yeah. Um, so we need to, to figure out, like, I don't know, some of these. There's a lot, like. I was like, what the heck? I don't even know what all these are. I, you know, it's just, it seems a little bit much. I, I just personally, I mean, if we want to keep them all, that's fine with me. I don't really, really care, but this just seems like a lot. And I don't know if they're automatically assigned or if like somebody has to sign. I, I don't know. So, um, yeah, we need to look at this. And the other issue is that we need to figure out a moderation guide. So we had um, someone find some, um, we had a few suggestions from Justin back in the day, and then we had um, one of our contributors found a bunch of others so that we can kind of create our own moderation guide for that forum. And so that's, those are the two real things that are um, need to be taken care of before we really start to actively use discourse, but I did want to give everybody a heads up that um, we are going to add that in and it is going to um, replace the mailing list which is super super low traffic now the idea behind it um, just for anyone who doesn't know is that um, discourse is a little bit better at surfacing long-term conversations and like the history of like how things were discussed it's a lot better than slack for finding that stuff um, and i know chaos africa wants to use discourse for some things as well so um yeah, so that was kind of the the push towards using something that's a little more newcomer friendly than the mailing list, and that would be you know uh, uh, able to we could point people to things a little bit easier to conversations or information or things like that. So for newcomers as well. And just to make people aware, we our Slack now does not remove history, so we have at least a year of data. If you are searching Slack for something, there's more there. That doesn't replace discourse. I think that's still a better solution, but our, our Slack has a little bit more content than it did before. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, um, that's really helpful. That was the other issue too, is we, we were on the free <laughs> free Slack version. So, you know, our, our conversations were just off into the ether after a certain amount of time. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you, Sean. Be, I will be happy to shut down the main community mail list because basically, all that I do is um, discard messages and ban people from the list. That's like my a daily activity of mine. Spam. Yeah, <laughs> so much spam goes to that list. It's really a shame. It's really a shame. And the the interface. I, I know we've had a few newcomers who have tried to kind of uh, sign up for the mailing list, and it's like literally has not changed since 1995. I don't think so. <laughs> it's not super. No, I would keep them. There's a member list for board members, and I will yeah. certainly keep that list, but. Um, and then there is a DEI list as well. That's also pretty lightly used. I mean, we could think about not having that as well. Yeah, I think it's safe to just move that off to discourse as well. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, we could also move the board. I did set up a, a, like a private team for the board members to have like a private conversations. If we wanted to use discourse, we can, or keep it on mailing list, whatever you like. Okay. I mean, the mailing list primarily for the board is we have a board meeting coming up at some date. Please let us know your availability. That's largely what it's for. Gotcha. And the minutes, we also, I think, are kept the minutes there publicly. Fair enough. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, let's see. Venya says, uh, happy to use chaos as an example for building on the community charter for the upcoming work. Okay. Moderation guide. Okay. All right. So, yeah, we can definitely talk about that, Venya, for sure. Um, okay, anything else here on our agenda that we need to talk about before we end the meeting? No? Going once? Going twice? All right, so I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to stop the recording. See you later, everybody. If you